We finally got it. The Hockey Ultimate Team Deep Dive for NHL 24. It's time to break it down. And I guess this is one of the more weirder breakdowns that you'll see, considering I made the video. So, let's talk about it. Let's kick things off with the biggest addition coming to NHL 24 with the all-new Hup Moments. This year, you'll be able to play through some of the most historic moments in hockey history. One of the more fun things about a creator doing this video is that I got to choose exactly what content went in it and what was shown. So I tried to show as much as I possibly could so you guys could have as much information as possible. So right here, this is the list of X Factor moments that will be in the game at launch. All of these cards on the left-hand side, confirmed X Factors. I'll talk about it more later in the video, but every single team in NHL 24 will have one X Factor and each of them have their own corresponding moment at launch of the game, as well as complete moments that happen during this upcoming season. Now, Hut Moments will be replacing the offline Hut Challenges from past games. In Hut Challenges, you were limited to a vague set of objectives to complete against a set roster in the game. In Hut Moments, you will be dropped into a specific time and scenario with customized best X-Factor card art that we've gotten easily players and rosters to fit that exact moment in hockey and some will include a detailed breakdown from james sabolski to hype up that moment in the opening round of the 2021 playoffs the montreal canadians found themselves on the brink of elimination trailing 3-1 to their arch rivals the toronto maple leafs it was nick suzuki who ignited the spark in game five with an electrifying overtime goal propelling the Habs to not only force a game six but to also claim the series in seven this is your moment. Triumph over the Leafs in overtime and orchestrate a remarkable series comeback. Look, I could have chosen any moment to go here, but I figured this one would piss the most amount of people off, I'll be honest. Now, on top of the large list representing the more recent events in hockey, there will also be some of the most memorable in the history of the sport. Mario's emotional return in December of 2000 against the Leafs, all the way to Gretzky's five-goal game against the Flyers in 1981, giving him 50 goals in 39 games. On top of all that, some moments will actually have you player locked to a specific player to complete that moment and yes that includes goaltenders one of the most requested quality of life improvements from the community has been ending a moment when you've completed all of the objectives so i had to ask nicholas what happens when you complete all of the objectives in a hut moment we actually gave the option to end the moment early this year i know it's something that was kind of called out as a, a quality of life thing in the past so now very simply the next face off in the game you'll get prompted you can exit and claim rewards early if you're having fun playing the match and just want to play it all the way through you can just hit continue and still quit out and get your rewards early anytime let's talk about hut moments if you didn't play in the community play test this is your first look at hut moment it is the perfect recreation of what offline hut challenges should have been and i'm it's really excited it's brought back from nhl 15 offline hut challenges have been in the game since nhl 17 and they were a complete joke. They were forgotten about, and they were there just to say they were there for offline players. The rewards were pitiful, the objectives made no sense, and half the time they didn't work, and the rosters were whatever team's rosters they were. Hup moments have specific roster tied to that moment. Some of them have you player locked, even as a goaltender, which is sick, and a few of them are really challenging. Here are my fears for Hup moments. I can confirm that during the first event of the year, that each of the Master Set players that will come out for that event will get a Hup moment, as they should. It is the big marketed mode in Hockey Ultimate Team, and every event has a few cards that are hyper-focused on. Those players are the ones they want to represent that event. They need to have a moment. And my fear is that as the year goes along, they're not going to keep up with that. So hopefully, the live content team will continue to make moments for every single Master Set player that comes out. Next, the rewards. If they stay the same as offline challenges, like 500 coins for every star that you complete, or maybe, you know, a few power-up collectibles or X-Factor cards by completing the whole list, that's going to be a major letdown. Here is what I pray that we see. You're going to see throughout this video that it does look like cards are going to be much more lower rated at launch of the game to, again, help progression not escalate so fast in HUT. What needs to happen, in my opinion, is that every time that there is an event, there is a moment tied to every single Master Set player. At the bare minimum, when you complete that moment for each of those players, you get the lowest tier rating of that Master Set player. If we don't get that, that is a massive miss, and I really won't understand any justification for it. So, I've got some massive pessimism about that, 
but we'll have to wait and see when the game actually launches how that's going to work. The next issue I have, there's no denying that if you were to make a perfect version of offline hut challenges, you would get hut moments. The issue is, is that if you were to rank the five ways to play hockey ultimate team, it would go rivals, squad battles, hut champs, hut rush, and then offline challenges, meaning that they picked the fifth most engaged mode to recreate first. And again, there's no denying that they made offline challenges perfect, but there's also no denying that it is legitimately like the fifth most played mode. Myself personally, I would have loved to see rivals or squad battles get fixed first, simply because if you're an offline player, your main mode is squad battles for rewards. And if you're an online player, you're probably not playing Hup Moments. Give us the master set players for each moment of the future events upcoming. And for anyone that has not played Hockey Ultimate Team in the past year or so, it's not very expensive to get the lowest tiered master set player. It's the least they could do. And it makes sense. Like you're playing that moment for that player. And they make sure they update moments regularly. I'm talking every event throughout the year. Okay, well done. Speaking of completing objectives, that leads us into our next feature for NHL 24. Objectives 2.0. In this year's game, objectives will be tracked in real time and can now include in-game actions such as goals, assists, shot types, hits, as well as dekes. This is a massive upgrade from NHL 23 in which objectives were limited to games played with a specific card type such as a current event or simply totaling a certain stat like score 50 goals regardless of the player used to do so. In NHL 24, the objectives can be tracked with specific cards. For example, if a new event event comes out instead of just games played with event cards it will be score goals get assists and some will even have you doing so with specific cards now to keep track of these objectives you'll receive an in-game pop-up while you work towards the objectives now i asked nicholas what that means from a developer standpoint and what he's most excited for when it comes to objectives 2.0 we're utilizing this new tech to actually refresh our daily and weekly objectives so we want to you know give a different look to that stuff and and just give some new fun things to do you know every day and every week um, and then on top of that the thing that I'm most excited about is you know we're able to build objectives 2.0 around doing things with specific player cards specific players specific teams or card types and all that's going to allow you know event objectives to have a lot more depth and be a lot more meaningful objectives 2.0 low-key one of the best additions to hockey ultimate team that we've gotten maybe ever I have no complaints with it in this example right here on the screen if you pre-order the game and you get the 85 overall Kale McCarr training camp card, you can see just some of the examples of how Objectives 2.0 will work, where it's going to track you doing specific things with specific cards. Why that's huge is because it isn't just the monotonous get an event card and play games. That was what Objectives 1.0 was. Anytime that you've got to do specific things with certain cards adds way more engagement to the actual mode. The only improvement that they could make to this is if you completed these objectives that you upgraded the card, like the parallel system in MLB. So if you completed all these Kale McCarr objectives by doing specific things in game with them that you know his overall went up so while i was a little critical of hut moments objectives 2.0 is a massive win to complete those objectives it's going to be far easier because in nhl 24 we are getting a shared economy in this year's game you will be able to buy sell and trade with players from the opposite console meaning that playstation 5 and xbox series s and x players they will now share a single market playstation 4 and xbox one players they will also share a single market not much else to say here this was announced by EA a few weeks ago. Cross market is one of the biggest quality of life improvements that everyone in the NHL community has been asking for essentially doubling all of the cards on the market. And because cards are currency, this is going to lead to a far better gaming experience inside of HUD. So it being easier to acquire the cards you're looking for in NHL 24, you'll be able to show them off with the all new HUD share. This will allow you to share your roster through a single screenshot. It includes both desktop and mobile view designed for easy sharing of your progress. It'll highlight your entire roster as well as some of the biggest accomplishments you've made during your time in Hockey Ultimate Team. Another cool feature, I think some people will take advantage of it. This is really going to help for anyone that wants to, you know, ask me team builder questions, things like that. You'll no longer have to use third-party team building websites to go out and build your team to do so. Shameless plug, Hut Hub, the site that I help build on League Gaming, is coming back in full force, and we'll have every single card at launch of the game. Link is down below to Hut Hub, and you're going to see a ton of massive improvements to the site again at launch. However, again... 
as a person who plays this game and a creator, I try to throw as many cards as I possibly could in here uh, to kind of give you some hints at some of the other cards that are coming. So real quick, uh, a bunch of team builders. So you'll see like Mike Green, Marion Hosa, Dale Howard Chuck, but the 87 Ronick, you're going to see him featured in a little bit. That's one of the new team builders when you collect all of, you know, the individual team builder cards. That's one of the cards that you can trade in for. We've also got some new icon art and how icons are going to work is drastically different. Again, later in the video, you'll see Stevie Eiserman as well as Boreas Salming. And Tomash Hurdle, my boy, confirmed the Sharks representative as an X-Factor. We're also getting the brand new XP sets. In this year's game, you'll earn XP from logins, daily, and weekly objectives for use in a new linear set track. By completing all 40 sets released weekly, you can earn yourself an all 99 overall master item. To speak more about the new XP sets, I asked Nicholas about how it's going to work. Yeah, so we wanted to look at a way of, of revamping of the monthly collectible sets. And so this year, we're actually gonna have a more linear track, but the real goal of it, the real exciting part about it is you're actually pursuing this, what, what we kind of call the ultimate hut reward. And it's gonna be a 99 everything card that you'll get just from completing these sets throughout the year. And so you get XP collectibles from daily and weekly challenges, etc. And then as you do these sets, you'll earn individual collectibles that work toward this ultimate reward. I think I was mentioning like we really want these to represent or be representative of, you know, what happened this year, big stories from that year. And so that they actually have meaning in the context of the 23-24 season. So right now I can only reveal two that have been chosen, which are Kale McCarr, who's our cover athlete this year and Connor Bedard, first overall pick from the- All right, XP sets are essentially replacing seasonal collectibles and the seasonal reward path, and it does it in a very effective way. So let's say you pick the game up in January. All the sets that have already come out at the launch of the game, you can go back and get XP sets by logging in, doing objectives, all of that. You can get a ton and actually catch up, uh, which is huge because at the end of the game, you get rewarded with a 99 overall. Again, much like Hup Moments though, my issue is if you were to log line up all of the live content and what you would want to improve, seasonal collectibles is like the last thing on the list. So again, while XP sets is a fantastic way to fix seasonal collectibles, it's just like the least important one. And again, just to be clear, while you're going throughout the season and you're filling in the sets as you go, you get packs and stuff like that along the way. It's not just like you just have to cash them in and then eventually when you get to the final tier, you get Kale McCarr or whatever the other 99s are. You are getting packs along the way as well. So again, just wanted to reiterate that. Also getting a change in NHL 24 will be synergies. There are going to be a base set of synergies for each player type in the game. For example, power forwards will have the power forward synergy, which will allow player types to more reflect their play style in game. On top of that, there'll be new boost synergies, which will be added to player items through live content. The first thing we wanted to do was bring more meaning to the player types in the game. So right now they're kind of represented as, you know, three letters on a card, you know, two way forward, power forward, etc. And this year, we're actually gonna have a power forward synergy that goes on every power forward item. It helps you understand when you're building a team that you're building around a certain identity. And on top of that, there will be another number of synergies that are purely just boosts and they're named a little bit more simply. Like there's an acceleration boost, a speed boost, etc. cetera. And um, we wanted to make that, uh, you know, the synergies a little bit more approachable for players and a little bit more understandable. All right, so we're inching towards a build system with this synergy setup. I think this is a great way to spice up synergies. It makes it so that they can have cards or players like power forwards, Matthew Kachuk, his synergies more are in line with that player type, which again, I think is kind of cool. And it makes sense. As you go along with cards that have unlockable synergy slots, you will unlock boosts to skating or shooting and things like that. And again, it just kind of makes sense and it works towards a build system. And lastly, let's discuss the content coming up in NHL 24. X Factor will be coming back to NHL 24. X-Factor Choice Packs, back to being one of five. In this year's game, there will be a representative from every single NHL franchise, totaling 32 players across the league. On top of that, there will be six women X-Factor cards from their corresponding internationals. Want to touch on X-Factors real quick? Again, I think the change from just like the top players in the game getting an X-Factor card as opposed to the one of 32 is an actual good change. I can give you the representation of someone who follows a team that is absolutely brutal in the San Jose Sharks. Them not having an X-Factor 
factor really sucks from like a team building standpoint because I want to have an X factor of the Sharks. I don't care who it is. Hurdle's a great one, by the way. Obviously, the downfall to this is like the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's Mitch Marner, not Matthews. However, we've come to realize that X-Factor cards are really brutal value and they should just be used for team building aspects. So like I said, I actually like this change. But they don't have customizable abilities again, so... <laughs> Team Builders will also be making a return to NHL 24 with some major changes in how you acquire the Team Builder cards. As you go through and collect cards from each individual squad, you will get that team's 84 overall Team Builder card. Marion Hossa is the Blackhawks Team Builder, so if you get all of the Blackhawks, you'll get Marion Hossa. Kinda slaps for launch of the game. Potential early banger. Once you have collected, again, try to throw as many team builders into the video that you can see. Patrice Brisewap from the Montreal Canadiens. Actually a low-key fun selection for the 87 overall. Did six total 84 overall team builder cards. Again, because of the lower overalls at launch of the game, the cost to get the first set of team builders is reduced. It only costs six instead of eight, and 87s are still among the best cards at launch of the game. You could then trade them in for an 87. However, the big change coming to NHL 24 is that it can be any of the 32 team builder cards, meaning that you won't need to collect every single division and every single team if you wanted the new 87 overall Jeremy Roenick. Ah, I get points for the Jack Johnson meme, come on. You could go ahead and cash in six Jack Johnson cards to acquire him. All right, freeze frame on what the 87 overall team builder Jeremy Roenick will look like. Again, I kind of like the synergy change in how it works now. With the shooting boost, everything, all of his shooting stats get jacked up, which is nice. So I think that's like low-key a nice change. In the return to NHL 24 are the power-up icons set. Now the big change to the power-up icons this year will be the fact that they are broken down into four separate categories. You've got playoff heroes, rookie cards, vintage, as well as dynamic duo. Now once you are able to collect the two headliner items from each of those four sets, you can then trade them in for the ultimate power-up icon. In this year's game, they will be Mario Lemieux, Wayne Gretzky, and Gordie Howe. And they will continue to upgrade throughout the Icons are one of the bigger changes, and again, I'd love to hear your feedback on it. I think because there are so many Master Set players that they wanted to simplify the list and update the card art for it, but essentially there's eight power-up icons for each of the subsections, so playoff heroes, rookies, dynamic duos, and vintage. So there are a lot less, but how you get Gretzky Mario and Gordy Howe is significantly improved from last year because they removed that final gambling aspect at the very end with the most expensive set of cards that you had to get a year. So from Hut Moments to Objectives 2.0, the new XP sets and updated live content, there is a lot to do in this year's game. So overall, I'm glad gameplay is going to be way different. Unfortunately, it does look like Hut received some pretty good quality of life improvements, but there's still no major shakeup to the mode. There's no way to look around it. The same cycle of rivals, champ squad battles, repeat looks to be in effect. Maybe they'll come out with something and surprise all of us. I do think Hut Moments is a great addition from offline challenges and objectives 2.0 is fantastic but the live content team is gonna have to carry the load significantly this year and have it far improved from nhl 23 let me know what you think in the comments section down below and if you haven't subscribed already make sure you do for the most up-to-date news tips and info for nhl 24 i'll see you next time